Well, hello, good evening, good afternoon, and every other time in between. How is everybody doing today? We're getting right into this. We had a little bit of an issue, and I have lost all my old saves, so we are starting completely from scratch. Luckily, nothing too significant was... lost on us so hopefully uh, everybody can hear everything we are here in the step time for some good old role-playing as the Mongols here's our character Tumen of the clan of Lu we are the children of the dragon For our clan, we view the Azure Dragon, the Dragon of the East, as our progenitor. How you doing, Queen? And we're going to immediately, before we unpause, take a look at the situation we have going on. I already went ahead and put us onto Authority Focus. But we still need to pick our Minute Arms and make sure our Council is basically the best that we can get it. So... Outside of putting them on focus here. Our primary goal is just to get Catacorum as basically developed as possible. Starting out in the steppe region, we are hugely uh, compromised by a whole bunch of tiny little other tribal villages around us. Oh, I, I've, I've messed around with them quite a bit. I've done with before and after. They're one of my favorite factions to play. The, the Mongols are very, very fun. And with Crusader Wars, they're even more fun. So let's immediately go ahead and get ourselves our first unit. And that's going to be horse archers and we're gonna immediately up it and we're gonna wait for them to rise so our character he's a uh, pretty good took a little while to get him to be precisely at 400 so we could have like you know what would be considered the achievements even though it doesn't matter because playing modded, I can't get achievements anyways. But I do like to have that base 400. Don't go above it. So we have Raider, Logistics, and Reaver. Making our character very good at what he does. He is brave, patient, and calm. I mean, nope, no, 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 no. I got rid of patient for uh, diligent. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I would say is uh, switch the uh, switch the horse archers to just be noble horse archers in the earlier, and that's just a personal preference because I don't like the Utagar as a unit, but it's not bad. Okay, let's see if they're going to come try to get on to us. We're in an era and phase of the game where we're going to have a lot of raiding going on. And we're going to be doing a lot of raiding. I believe I should just have to go in and uh, change the uh, file section themselves. I'll actually have to look into it. We have our unit up enough. Getting close. We 
Where should our first victims be hit from? That's not a bad place. Yeah, I haven't messed with a uh, unit mapping before. But yeah, we're just gonna raid, bring back our stuff, or get attacked. And being that it's the first time that we're loading this, it just takes a second. And here we go into Crusader Wars. Well, I know you're really good at explaining all this. So I, I'm very confident I won't have any issue with any of that. And welcome to the cold reality of the steppe. It's harsh living, and we have a bunch of our guys ready to do their thing and we're just gonna throw our knockers over here I do love the new skin mod for the step voodoo really outdid himself with this one Yeah, when it comes to Crusader Wars, he's one of the um, primary people. If I remember right, you're the uh, head of the public relations, all that sort of stuff, right? A couple of the others come in, too. Oh yeah, we're, we're about to have a lot of insanity. Let's just put it that way. toggle skirmish and basically sit back and relax. Now I do have a few of my own uh, flavor. The Mongols were capable of running back and forth and reloading so we have our ammo refill, basically the ability to refill our ammo. And we have Parthian shot and that is a simple, if you're doing any step playthrough in any of the uh, Total Wars. Uh, we found the uh, enemy real quick. But if you're doing any um, playthrough in the step, always make sure you have it turned on because for some reason Attila doesn't have um, default Parthian shot. Which is what the uh, Unigar is demonstrating over here. Just the ability to fire behind them. And this is all the step is. is just... Harassment Simulator. You just want to divide off your units. And pick them off one by one.
Yep. Just like that, just draw them into an area where you can get them crossfire, and now they're gone. They're bye byes. Yeah, basically everybody in the step did it. And the Parthians come from the step, so... Just like that. Oh yeah, they, they are fun. Very micromanagey, but as soon as you get them into position, just leave them on skirmish. They'll take care of themselves. You just gotta flip between them every so often. As we get larger, it's going to get more and more um, complicated. Real masters of the horse. Basically, everybody on the step was born practically on the back of a horse. As soon as you could walk, you could hold, as far as they're concerned, you could hold a bow and you could ride. And they were started to basically, they would have to hunt, feed themselves, all that sort of stuff. They would be taught very early. Uh, the map looks like cancer already. It's not even a full year. Something I need to fix myself, but hey. Let's take back our little bit of loot and see what else we can grab a hold of. Technically, have the advantage being in the hills, but we'll show the Tartars who's boss real quick. That looks like we're getting a little random event, but right back into the fight we go. Now the Tartars are a different group of, um, they are in the Greater Mongolic. But they aren't the Mongols themselves, but they're closely related. How you doing, Liz? Put 
put our chieftain back here. Guys, there. Rush ourselves over here and start picking them off. But Unigars are about to get annihilated. That's fine. The whole unit has been destroyed. Looks like they're finishing them off. Precision shots. Men have given up and are running for their lives. It's like our knights are running away. So our biggest threats are really going to be other step tribes. For a good while. Because let's put it this way, when we start encountering uh, the more civilized societies when it comes to their outlook, uh, we're going to run circles around them. <laughs> 
Their fancy shields don't matter whenever they got arrows coming from every direction. How we encounter uh, elephants? Well, all we gotta do is use our whistling arrows. We're just gonna be here annihilating their societies. Doing this all for Tangra. And we're basically also going to avoid what's going on in uh, Western Europe. Basically Europe in general. If it's not in the steppe and directly below us down in Tibet, we're not concerned. I think we've done enough raiding for right now. Actually, let's see. 600, that's a bit much. First thing we definitely want to do is turn around and build ourselves some ho some uh, horse herds. And also some sort of a little defensive wall. If Crusader Wars ever gets um, the Chinese like mapping and things I would love to put one of the maps that have, like, China and stuff in this. Now we must just be out of uh, men to do that. Which, if that's fine. Did we capture anybody of use? Let's take a look. Nope. I need a court position, though. Let's look at getting ourselves married. I want somebody that is... Oh, the initial games that I went and did, the cursor was just annoying to have on screen. And I never really turned it off in OBS to turn it back on. How old are you? 30. Hmm. 
Oh, you'll do, you have 17. It depends on what era you're talking about when it comes to the Mongols, but it wasn't really passed down in what we would consider the traditional European sense. Like, each one of the sons would get something. And it was sort of important to be like, oh, hey, you, you know, you're the Khan's son and stuff like that. Which, um, we refer, we say the word Khan. Actually wrong. It's actually Han. You, you put a lot more <laughs> into it. But that's besides the point. So, yeah, it would just sort of depend on how it would go down. And what era we're talking about. In times where it was big and powerful, yeah, it was important for the Khan to have a direct succession when it came down. And his older son would usually be the one that would inherit all of his titles and basically his power and stuff like that. But it was still merit-based. Like, one of your brothers could easily come up and start grabbing a hold of your stuff if he proved to be better. Women were... Women were women. It, it didn't matter where they exactly came from. And a lot of the fighting in the tribal basically when they were divided like this was for women some of the raiders would just go out to kidnap women kidnapping the other person's wives whenever they got married and, and stuff like that there was a whole bunch and every single woman on the step would also be taught how to use a bow use a ride all of that sort of stuff like weakness of any kind in the step is not tolerated because simply you would die. If you cannot take care of yourself, you would die. A court position. That would be nice. Very nice. Our wife is pregnant. There would still be alliances and stuff like that thrown through marriage like whenever they got up and there was like really big um empires etc the steppe peoples really liked like M mongol warlords really liked chinese princesses they would tend to fight over them Yeah, unfortunately we don't have much of a marshal, but he's got high learning, so he should go up. Oh, you're you're going to come up to try to fight me? Is that really what you want to do, buddy? Okay. Mongol society, especially during this time frame, and it's kind of true for the rest of the steppe, to be honest, it, it was very brutal, but also very tolerant at the same time.
Like, the Mongols will view everybody who is part of Greater Mongolia as part of themselves, especially whenever they form their empire. And I do like the atmosphere of the steppe, just, it's amazing. Yeah, a lot of the times, though, going back to uh, the concept of noble birth and stuff, a lot of the um, large steppe empires fell apart simply because the sons just were not strong enough and perceived to be strong enough to keep all the different clans in check. Had an advantage. Just keep them annihilated. <laughs> that is so satisfying. It never gets old. But moving around in Mongol society was also very uh, easy, just based off of your own merit, because Genghis Khan, he was captured at one point when he was young, forced into slavery, and then came back around. Like, the story of Genghis Khan is just absolutely nuts. We definitely need to get some better characters, though.
really can't raid them because they just got that down. But hey, let's grab. We don't even need Casa's belly to be honest. But the raid stuff is definitely necessary. Take some good old loot and plunder over this way. If they want to attack me, they can come over here and try. Newborn son, good. We shall name him. There's a nice name. Oh, there was a decent one. I like Alton. There we go. And we will educate Alton ourselves. I don't know any sickly. Oh, we jumped off that stuff. Oh, they're really wanting to chase us. Let's just come further into our territory, my friend. They don't even have a proper commander. They didn't even survive two Crusader Wars to start up. Oh, but we still got them. I need just to tell our, uh, Council to be permanently off of the uh, knights because they keep dying. Man, we're on a big old hill for some reason. Spearman back here and the enemy tremble before our superior numbers. We want the biggest cross section that we can so we can fire as many arrows.
Uh, they want to be in the trees. Time to light the forest on fire. Precision shout. Look, they're hidden units. Round and move. On the floor. More fire. Flame. Death and carnage. Yes, release the suffering. And they're running away. <laughs> Fire and brimstone. Being the Mongols for sieges when that comes out for Crusader Wars much later on will be absolutely fun. Because Mongol sieges were absolutely brutal. Oh, that'll be fun. Raid battles would be awesome. their little army apart. Let's chase it down. Make them regret their decisions. Now that's one thing I'm looking forward to is the commander traits. Because they're a pretty big part of the total war battles. gonna raid this tribe that tried to raid us. Don't you dare die. Oh yes, good. Bring me the boundless plunder. Palisade. That 
does sound good either way. Now, unfortunately, we don't really need to take up some concubines, even though as part of the Tangra, we do not need... You know, we're supposed to take up concubines, but we don't really need them. So, Tangriism, or Tangriism is a very interesting religion as it's monotheistic as the only god is Tangra itself, which is the blue sky god, but there's some other godlike entities. So it's sort of like a pseudo monotheistic and dear god this map is like cursed this time around. They formed Italy really quick. Which is interesting. I don't know what happened to Francia. Charlemagne and Carloman are still around. Ugh, I didn't even. I shouldn't have even looked over this way. Now my eyes want to bleed. I'm sure it sorted itself out. Why is it like the opposite side of the map from where you're at always in CK3 just becomes an absolute nightmare? Yeah, historic invasions will start kicking in in about a hundred years into the game start, so... That will at least make it look nice. Concubine, we don't need it. Let's grab our first territory. Who is weaker. Either one of you will do. So you have been chosen. Now we do want to grab these two territories to form the duchy that's here. Again, we wiped them out before <laughs> the game even kicked in. But we like Crusader Wars. Yeah, darn it. Now I'm knocking everything over. Look at that, episode one, we already have a lot of fighting. This is actually why I don't like the Unigar, because I just don't like anything that deploys outside of the deployable area. Just a personal thing. But we're gonna be uh we're gonna be crafty over here. And we're gonna have some interesting challenges from um, the Historic Invasions mod, actually. As there's a few, especially early on, Step Empires that will come along. Mostly the Cuban Kipjacks are gonna be our 
first major rival that it will spawn in. Precision shot. We have gained the upper hand. Okay. And just like that, they're chasing the horse archers. Just like that, they're dead. And we'll let our little spear wall deal with theirs. for me if you guys want to like just stand there and take it. Just like that, that was quick and easy. I do like this drawing, it's just the army of Wessex, some Anglo-Saxons waving at some Vikings, like, hey, we found you. What you guys doing? story. Oh, yeah, this is a journey to the west right here. Sun would come.
increase our force archers up. Yeah, this is my land now. Eleven years, gosh, he is horrible. But we got a better uh, guy now. There we go. Going down the route to give us more and more. Let's see, she's from Tibet. Embrace Tangri, you will become part of our whole little thing, and you're now a concubine. With a nice general trait. That makes our marshal a little better. Now we need to pick up some gathering halls. What should we do next? We could get a little bit more strength, just wait for our levies to get a little bigger. Or we can capture what's left of our uh, duchy. Let's see if the Borg again are somewhere around here. Should be. They might not have spawned in. In the uh, regular, the um, start dates for CK3 in the 800s and the um, 1066, if you go over here and look, you'll see the Borgigans, and those are the ones that Genghis Khan comes from. That's his clan. So if you ever wanted to basically play Genghis Khan, there's where you would want to go. And we're just going to go ahead and incorporate you into my land. Tumen's becoming a powerful warlord. Nice and action-packed. <laughs> They've got 
got some step archers. Enemy tremble before our superior numbers. Let's see right where they got everything. <laughs> Horse tail spears. Interesting, let's slaughter him. Yeah, they saw the horde coming, and they're like, "Yeah, we're not, we're, we're not gonna bother with that." Just let them stare at each other for a little bit. Nope, they're not gonna just stare at us. Or maybe. Well, that unit's already gone. see you later. <laughs> Can't even get close to the chieftain. Death and Carnage, they didn't even stand a chance.
I didn't even set up the uh, backstory for that. I I'm starting to get lazy. So for our character, even though he's sort of kind of gone in, his whole little uh, backstory and the reason why he's out here doing what he's doing is he is wanting to become famous and become a warlord himself, a proper person of the step. It's a fairly simple backstory, but it's one that's very common. He's just one of many different chieftains and will become high chieftains trying to make their way in life. Build a dynasty that will last the test of time. Okay, five guys got away from that. Hopefully Alton survives. He is sickly. Looks like everything's going all right for him so far. Uh, speaking of, he has grown strong. Nice and healthy. And that's another territory we need. Alton himself. I mean, not Alton, but uh, that's our next guy. Tumen isn't really the best on uh, management, etc. for Stuart, so three is the best that we can uh, suffer right now. And we just got sick. Uh, get a little better. Well, this is nice. Gang rot. Feeling fine for the moment. <laughs> That's just lovely. But we can go ahead and create our title. So let's upgrade to a high chieftain. So we're now a High Chieftain, it looks like we are the first major High Chieftain in the area. The Ugors will be interesting. Who does our chieftain need to chieftain us? Let's stay here with me instead. We need babies. And good, now we can raid more. We have gang rot, and that's never good. Gold. We like gold. We'll 
hit these three tribes and then come back. Maybe this one too. Yeah, we do have some chieftains starting to fan out and become bigger. Ah, I got a prisoner. She's hail. That is nice. Boundless plunder. And we'll look at our prisoners when we get back. And we have such a good advantage here, we're just gonna let them do their thing. This tribe hopped onto this one after we raided it. I say we're good with what we got. Opportunity to build up some gathering halls, which are good for our just generating a nice passive fame. And in this one, we want to probably have some war camps, get some more levies. became the uh, head of the Mongol culture group. I didn't notice that we did. Looks like we could do gavel kind, but I really like the uh, increase on our minute arms. Switch to there. Oh. Now we're going with Gavelkind then. Should probably build some markets here. Give us some more supply. Yeah, that definitely sounds better. Some markets here, our gathering halls, and our horse areas down here. And when we eventually get out of tribal, uh, Catagorum is a very nice little area to have as a capital, along with the rest of our duchy. A lot of bang for your buck, territory wise.
Oh yeah, we had some guys we needed to look at. Well, you... I'll gain a nice weak hook on. 27 decent stats across the board. We're gonna recruit. Have a nice weak hook. Okay, we can't have a nice weak hook. And we're just gonna release you. Another daughter. Good, good. And we will have somebody smart educate them, our court physicians. Got good learning. Peasantry gave me gifts. Uh, I like I like gifts. Let's give ourselves a. I'm torn on this one. It's like we can go with markets for supplies, or we could go with the war camps for more soldiers. I I'm gonna go with the market. It's gonna give us better stuff in the long run. point there. It's the quickest way to each one of our settlements if it gets attacked. The Tibetan Empire is looking strong. Which is good because we want to use it as a bank later on. her as a concubine. We could have made her one of our lovers. Marshall. And our new guy that we just record that we just uh recruited in, he's definitely going to be a very nice uh counselor.
keep our knights from dying. Tangri is a nice religion to keep alive. Gives us a lot of good bonuses. And we need to stay tribal and keep Tangriism alive in the steppe. To basically become Genghis Khan. And we need to capture all of this area right here. All of Mongolia. Well, this is Mongolia and this here is actually Greater Mongolia. Which actually extends off the map. Like it ex fully extends like clear out to here to Outer Mongolia. Up here is Upper Mongolia. And then Modern Mongolia. Looks like we're gonna start reading romance novels. Gonna have all the ladies swooing. I don't think Tuman's really given them much of a choice. But I am going to leave it here. We've accomplished a good bit today. We've created ourselves a high chieftain. Alton's becoming more... Not, I keep saying Alton. Tumen's becoming more famous. Hopefully before he dies we'll get this out of obscure. And we'll start going into our uh, legacies relatively soon at least hopefully whenever we come back we'll do a lot more raiding and just try to get our bank up as much as possible the more money we have the more we can upgrade and prepare our people for more expansion thank you all for uh, coming by I appreciate every bit of support that you all give if you don't mind I would love if everybody could go over to YouTube and like and subscribe over there whenever the video comes up. And anybody on YouTube, hop over here on the Twitch. Come join us when these videos are live. And I appreciate every bit of support. And i like to thank everybody who has decided to subscribe. I am heavily touched by everybody who is actually helping me out when it comes to this. And we'll be seeing you all laters, you alligators. Bye-bye now. now. Let's see if we got anybody to raid. Smur is still playing Yakuza. He's on the Song of Life. <laughs> let's go over there and bother him.